morning. Uh, let me uh, make a couple of comments about the meeting we just had and be glad to answer a couple of questions. You can lead it off for you in a minute. Uh, I want to thank some of our nation's leading economists for coming today to share their thoughts with me about our economy, the strength of our nation, how best to make sure people can find work. We had a great discussion about the plan that I um, laid out for the Congress to consider and to enact, a plan which focuses on job creation, a plan which recognizes that money in the consumer's pocket will help uh, grow this economy, a plan that recognizes there are some long-term things we can do to make sure the investor feels comfortable taking risks in America. It is a plan that recognizes that economic growth is not as strong as it should be. It's a plan that's good for all Americans. It is a plan that addresses our needs, and it's a plan that Congress needs to pass. Uh, these economists can speak for themselves after they leave, but they have given good advice and sound judgment, and for that I'm grateful. Uh, I'll take a couple of questions. Ron? So last week in this room, you came out against quotas, which have been unconstitutional for 25 years. Yeah. They did answer the central question, that is whether race can be used as a factor in emissions. Dr. Rice says it could be, Colin Powell yeah. says it should be. What is your position? Uh, my position is, is that as the... Um, uh, as the brief says, that there are clearly unconstitutional means to achieve diversity. There are race-neutral ways to achieve diversity, which uh, I have put in place as the governor of Texas, and that will leave the courts to define the outer limits of the Constitution. Adam. Yes. Uh, this you want to question? No. I just answered it. No, I answered it. The courts will make the de definition of the outer limits of the... C and as Condi Rice said, she felt very c comfortable in saying on national TV, the decision I made was the right decision. Adam. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. The French are saying they would block a UN resolution authorizing force on Iraq. Are you frustrated by these comments? Can you still reach a consensus? Well, Adam, first of all, it's uh, important for the American citizens and the f f citizens around the world to understand that Saddam Hussein possesses some of the world's deadliest weapons. He poses a, a serious threat to America and our friends and allies. Uh, the world came together, including the French, to say he must disarm. He's not disarming. As a matter of fact, it appears to be a rerun of a bad movie. Uh, he's delaying. He's deceiving. He's asking for time. He's playing hide-and-seek with inspectors. But one thing is for certain, he's not disarming. And so the United States of America, in the name of peace, will continue to insist he does, an, does disarm, and we will keep the pressure on Saddam Hussein. Angle. Mr. President, when do you intend to make a decision about whether or not the inspection process is actually has any hope of really disarming Saddam Hussein? Well, it is clear to me now that he is not disarming. Uh, and surely uh, our friends have learned lessons from the past. Uh, surely we have learned how this man deceives and delays. I mean, he's, he's, he's given people the runaround. And uh, as many of my advisors said on TV this week, the time is running out. I, uh, I believe in the name of peace he must disarm. And we will lead a coalition of willing nations to disarm him. Make no mistake about that. He will be disarmed. But when, when, how, how do you decide when that moment comes? I, 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 I will let you know when the moment has come. <laughs> <laughs> President, who's in, the, in that coalition of the willing hour? You will find out who's in the coalition of the willing. It's very much like well, what happened prior to our uh, getting a resolution out of the United Nations. Many of the punditry, of course not you, but other punditry. <laughs> We're quick to say no one is going to follow the United States of America, and we got a unanimous resolution out of the United Nations. And uh, this, the United Nations, the United States has made it clear our intention, and our intention is to work with the world to for Saddam to disarm. 
He's been given ample time to disarm. We have had ample time now to see that the tricks of the past, all right, he's employing the tricks of the past today. He's given people the runaround. He, is, he wants to play hide and seek. He's got a vast country. He wants to focus the attention of the world on inspectors. This is not about inspectors. This is about a disarmed Iraq. He has weapons of mass destruction, the world's deadliest weapons, which pose a direct threat to the United States, our citizens, and our friends and allies. He has been told to disarm for 11 long years. He's not disarming. This business about, you know, more time. You know, how much time do we need to see clearly that he's not disarming? As I said, this looks like a rerun of a bad movie, and I'm not interested in watching it. <laughs> all right, thank you all.